jaguar is a big cat, a feline in the Panthera genus, and is the one cat of that genus found in the Americas. On our planet, only the tiger and the lion are cats larger than the jaguar, and in the western hemisphere, the jaguar is the largest. The jaguar can be found in the southwestern United States and Mexico, as well as across most of Central America. Its range continues well into South America as far as Paraguay and northern Argentina. It seems that for now the show is over with this female jaguar. The red-crested cardinal gets its common name from its red head and prominent crest, native to northern Argentina, Bolivia, southern Brazil, Paraguay, and Uruguay, the red-crested cardinal has been introduced to various regions of the world, including Hawaii and Puerto Rico. The black and white tegu, also called the giant tegu, is the largest species of tegu lizard. They are an omnivorous species which inhabits the tropical rainforests, savannas, and semi-deserts of East and Central South America. Tegus have unusually high intelligence and can also be housebroken. Tegus fill ecological niches similar to those of monitor lizards and are an example of convergent evolution. The roseate spoonbill is one of six species of spoonbills in the world and the only one found in the Americas. The other five spoonbills, the Eurasian, Royal, African, Black-Faced, and Yellow-Billed, occur in Asia, Africa, Europe, and Australia. The roadside hawk, which is found from northern Mexico south to Argentina, is one of the most widespread raptors of the Neotropics. This species shows considerable geographic variation across its wide distribution, with 12 currently recognized subspecies. The world's largest rodent, the capybara, can attain weights in excess of 150 pounds. It is an important prey item of the jaguar. The larger individual seen here is a male, which is readily identified by the large scent gland atop his nose. And here we see a jacare cayma. This crocodilian occurs extensively throughout the Pantanal, but it must be careful because it is not the top predator. Indeed, the top predator is the jaguar, and jaguar regularly kill and eat jacare caiman. He noted that the jaguar can be found in the southwestern United States and Mexico. However, only a small number of jaguars have been seen in New Mexico, Arizona, southeast of Tucson, and Texas. But other than those few, since the early 20th century, the cat is mostly no longer found in the United States. Jaguars have been listed as a near-threatened species by the IUCN. In physical appearance, the jaguar is covered in rosettes for camouflage in the dappled light of its forest habitat. The spots vary over individual coats and between individual jaguars. Rosettes may include one or several dots, and the shapes of the dots vary. The spots on the head and neck are generally solid, as are those of the tail, where they may merge to form a band. Physically, with its spotted coat, the jaguar resembles the leopard, except that it is larger, stronger, and more muscular. Its fur is normally yellow and tan, but the color can vary from reddish-brown to black. A near-black melanin pigmented form occurs regularly. Jaguars with melanism dark pigmentation of the fur, appear entirely black, although their spots are still visible on close examination. 
On all jaguars, the spots on the coat are more solid and black on the head and neck and become larger rosette-shaped patterns along the sides and back of the body. Lions, tigers, leopards, and jaguars are the only cats that can roar. The sound is produced by a specialized larynx and flexible bone in its throat that can be used to stake territory, communicate generally, or express anger. The jaguar prefers life in a dense rainforest but will also live across open terrains, deciduous forests, swamps, pampas grasslands, and mountain scrub areas. Jaguars love the water and will bathe and swim, play and hunt to catch fish in pools or creeks. Once old enough to leave its mother, which is about 12 to 24 months, a jaguar tends to live a solitary life as an adult, comfortable mostly on its own. Typical lifespan in the wild is estimated at around 12 to 15 years. In captivity, the jaguar lives up to 23 years, placing it among the longest-lived cats. And here we encounter for the first time the giant otter. This is a brief encounter. We'll discuss this species more later when we have subsequent longer sightings. We encounter a group of capybaras, including a number of young. Let's follow them for a bit and see where they go. that the webbed feet of the capybara make this giant rodent especially adept at swimming.
The buff-necked ibis is one of the most widespread species of ibis in South America. It occurs in a wide variety of open habitats, such as savanna, ranchland, and open forest, but is notable for often being found far from water. Obviously, that's not the case here. It is one of the most distinctive large waders in South America, having a bright buffy head and neck, gray back, white primaries and secondaries, and black underparts. The neotropic cormorant is the only cormorant known to plunge dive into water to catch fish. Unlike gannets and boobies, it does not dive from great heights, restricting its dives to less than half a meter, 1.75 feet. It is not particularly successful with this technique, catching a fish in only one out of every six to ten plunge dives. The Amazon kingfisher here is seen in its most common roosting position. That is, on a limb overlooking water where it can catch fish. And here we again encounter a group of giant otters. The giant otter, known through much of its range as the river wolf, is one of South America's top carnivores and is the largest of the otter species in terms of total length. The muscular sinuous body is covered with velvety brown fur which is dense and water repellent. A patch of cream coloring is present on the throat and chin the pattern of which is unique to each individual from birth. The giant otter has short legs and large webbed feet which, along with the wing-like tail, allow the otter to move quickly through the water. The movement of prey is detected by the large eyes and sensitive whiskers. The size characteristics of the giant otter are as follows. Males attain a length of about 1.5 to 1.8 meters that's up to 5.7 feet long. Females are slightly shorter at 1.5 to 1.7 meters. Male weight is about 26 to 32 kilograms, while female weight about 22 to 26 kilograms. That comes to a maximum weight for males of just about over 70 pounds and females around a maximum weight of 57 pounds. The giant otter generally lives in family groups of three to ten individuals, composed of a monogamous breeding pair and their offspring, born during previous years. These groups rest, play, travel, fish, and sleep together. Members of the group use communal latrines, where they rub their feces and urine into the earth with their paws in order to advertise the group's residency. Breeding can take place throughout the year, although most young are born during the dry season. Litter size varies from 1 to 6 cubs, following a 64 to 72 day gestation. The new cubs are cared for by both the adults and older siblings. At 2 to 3 weeks, the cubs are put in the water by the female, 
and at three to four months, the cubs begin hunting and traveling with the family. The young are weaned at six months, and are efficient hunters by the age of ten months, although they remain with the family group for at least another year. Sexual maturity is attained by age 2.5 years, after which many young adults disperse. This snail kite female is seen enthusiastically feasting on a crab that it has caught. The Anhinga is seen here drying its wings. The remarkable bill of the black skimmer sets it apart from all other American birds. The large red and black bill is knife thin and the lower mandible is longer than the upper. The bird drags the lower bill through the water as it flies, hoping to catch small fish. The black skimmer is the only American representative of the skimmer family. The other two rather similar species are the African skimmer and the Indian skimmer. All use the same usual feeding method. Although the black skimmer is active throughout the day, it is largely crepuscular, active in the dawn and dusk. Its use of touch to catch fish lets it be successful in low light or darkness. At hatching, the two mandibles of a young black skimmer are of equal length, but by fledging at four weeks, the lower mandible is already nearly one centimeter longer than the upper. That's about almost one half an inch longer for the lower mandible. The giant otter is diurnal. Although highly adapted to its amphibious lifestyle, and despite its clumsy appearance on land, giant otters may travel several hundreds of meters between areas of water. The diet is composed almost exclusively of fish, but it is also known to eat caimans, anacondas, other snakes, and even the occasional turtle. The giant otter is endemic to South America except Chile, east of the Andes mountain chain. Currently, it is almost or completely absent from Argentina and Uruguay, and very rare in Paraguay. The giant otter is seen within the Orinoco, Amazon, and La Plata river systems. Note that the giant otter is listed by the IUCN as an endangered species. The southern screamer is one of three species of screamers. It is endemic to South America. It occurs in subtropical to tropical wetlands and marshes and can be found in crop fields. The southern screamer is herbivorous with a diet of aquatic plants, seeds, and other vegetation. This species is well known for its loud and harsh vocalization during flight. This is a large-bodied bird with stout tarsi and toes and a relatively short chicken-like bill. The rear crown has a crest usually recumbent of elongated pointed feathers. Head and upper parts are gray. Unlike other members of the bird order and seriformes, screamers molt gradually. They do not have a flightless period during their molt.
this Kokoi Heron is about to take off. hind legs of the black-striped tufted capuchin have evolved to become very strong. This enables the monkey to stand up and walk bipedally, as can be seen here. Note, however, that bipedal walking is not the common mode of locomotion for this species. This female is trying to hang on to a meal and carry young at the same time. These monkeys were observed on the premises of the Biazina Hotel, where we were staying. We set up several camera traps in hopes of getting photographs and videos of the Jaguar. Here we see our safari boat coming to check on one of those camera traps. This is a large pregnant female. She had just been in the water, probably swimming over from a nearby area. And she's coming to look at our camera trap. She came to inspect it just a half hour after we had set it. The blood on the sides of her body is not hers. It is likely from a prey item that she had been earlier interacting with. We can see that curiosity among felines is not limited to house cats. She certainly wants to carefully inspect this foreign object, the camera trap, which perhaps she perceives as having invaded her environment. This snail kite male is flying just above the river and looking for potential prey items. This handsome black, white, and buff species is sometimes called the pied plover, perhaps a more appropriate name given this species' small size, plover-like shape, and behavior of running short distances and stopping abruptly.
Let's see. Going to the boat, uh, the boat is at the Tiger Harrow. Who can send Tiger
Mm -hmm. Here we see roseate spoonbills and wood storks nesting in the same tree. Notice that the wood stork nest on the lower left hand side has two chicks in it. An attractive heron, if slightly odd in appearance, the capped heron is a resident of South American forested swamps, river courses, and small pools. Although it seems adaptable to any habitat with water and has a wide distribution, it usually occurs only at low densities. Often seen flying along rivers or feeding in pools, the capped heron can be conspicuous and easily is identified by its silvery white body plumage, black cap, and striking blue face. In flight, it is best distinguished from other white herons by its small size and rapid choppy flight style. Here we see a male snail kite observing the water for prey items. Here we see a snail kite patrolling the waters of the river near the bank. The black collared hawk is seen roosting along the river's edge here. Here we see a juvenile Rufusin tiger heron, and on the left we see a black crowned night heron, which has just taken off.
large big bird in the Pantanal. Yeah. Because in the South America are the combo not much bigger. The it's bigger than I am. The couple male and female for all life. These are the male. These South American monkeys are the loudest terrestrial animal in the Western Hemisphere and are usually the largest and most abundant primary wherever they live. Blonde at birth, males turn black as they mature, while females stay blonde their entire lives. No predators to compete with, the jaguar exists at the top of the food chain in its habitat. The physical makeup of the jaguar is such that stalking and ambushing prey is the preferred and more effective means of survival. The jaguar's ambushing abilities are considered nearly peerless in the animal kingdom by both indigenous people and field researchers. Its exceptionally powerful jaw structure gives the jaguar the strongest bite force of all of the big cats, enabling it to penetrate armored reptile shells as well as the hardened skulls of other larger animals. Unlike other cats, the jaguar can kill with a fatal bite between the ears, directly into the brain. Such an ambush may include leaping into the water after prey, 
as the jaguar is quite capable of carrying a large kill while swimming. Its strength is such that carcasses as large as a heifer can be hauled up a tree to avoid flood levels. In the food chain, the jaguar plays a vital part in stabilizing ecosystems and keeping in check the populations of animals within its range upon which this adept hunter depends on for its survival. Jaguars are known to eat armadillos, birds, cattle, crocodiles, deer, eggs, fish, frogs, heifers, horses, mice, and other rodents, monkeys, peccary, sloths, snakes, tapirs, turtles, and anything else they can catch, up to 87 different species of animal and reptile food sources. Reportedly, while hunting horses, a jaguar may leap onto their back, place one paw on the muzzle and another on the nape, and then twist, dislocating the neck. With smaller prey, such as monkeys or wild dogs, a paw swipe to the skull may be sufficient to kill the prey item. Whereas the jaguar is near to being completely gone from the United States, it still exists in Mexico, Central and South America, though it is now extinct in El Salvador and Uruguay. Elsewhere, jaguar populations are rapidly declining. The big cat is considered near threatened by the International Union of Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, meaning it may be threatened with extinction in the near future. Loss and fragmentation of habitat is a major threat to the jaguar. International trade involving jaguars or their parts is illegal, but the cat is still frequently killed by ranchers and farmers in South America attempting to prevent jaguars hunting their livestock. And poaching hasn't stopped, nor is it prohibited in every country. With regard to jaguar reproduction, we can note that in the tropics, the mating season occurs year-round. Gestation is 90 to 110 days and one to four kittens are born per litter. The kittens stay with the mother from one to one and a half years. Thank you.